This podcast is proudly brought to you by Lerato Agency and Lenala Beauty. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to yet another exciting installment of the Pat on Brands podcast with Pat and Bumi. Yeah, what do you do, what do you do? Hey, how are you, Patzo? It's been two weeks since we had our recording. Oh, it has. It has been two weeks and those episodes are out. Yes. So for those who are listening to us wherever and whenever, yep. make sure to tune in. I mean, we spoke about PR and the landscape of PR in 2023. Um, we also Marketing in- trends for 2023. We touched on a bit of that. Yep. Um, and yeah, and now we're actually going into... What's happening in different parts of um, marketing, different brands, yeah. um, and how the year looks like, I think, for, for many brands and just marketing as a whole. Absolutely. And also, our YouTube channel is also picking up quite a bit. So, yeah. please do subscribe. Yeah. And Guys, yeah, Geza for, 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 Leah, for Leah show. So, <laughs> for at least for that, yeah. if not for the content. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's a pity that our, for this particular episode, our videographer, Went to a funeral, you know, as black people on a Saturday morning. So this is going to be a audio. Audio um, only. Yeah, episode. But of course, you know where to hear us or listen yep. to us on Spotify, yep. on Apple. Cl- Apple? Apple? Podcast. Po- there we go. Apple Podcast. Um, SoundCloud. SoundCloud. Um, Anchor FM. Anchor FM. So yep. that's where you can listen to us, engage with us, talk to us. Ask us questions. Um, and like we always say, what burning question do you have that you would like one of our guests to answer? Um, yeah. What guests would you love to have on the show? Absolutely. Um, Give us yeah. those suggestions. You know, this is not a one-way stream. You know, yeah. we also like some feedback. You know, if the stuff that I usually like saying that you don't like, you can also give us that feedback. Be nice, though. Be nice. I mean, you're trying really hard. This is not <laughs> like, it doesn't come naturally. It doesn't, guys. You know how much time it takes to put together content, try and think, Absolutely. okay, what are we going to talk about and have that yeah. seamless. But that's besides the point. That's what we want to do. But we also want to do it because you guys love and you have yeah. input um, in terms of what you want to hear. Again, this is for the entrepreneur out there who we vote, we vouch for um, and we root for uh, and making sure that that market I was trying to figure out what to do how to do where to go Uh, many of the guests like we've said not necessarily went straight into marketing they've had a bit of a scenic route before arrival (laughs) Um, and one of our guests today also quite scenic I suppose Um, Mm. and we'll be discussing her journey um, today but before we go far into our guest conversation of course, it's brand new. Yes. So now, SABC, it was first licensing and Funugwenza, my license. So they were like, okay, let's find another way to to, to get you guys. Absolutely. So there is a streaming platform, and I think we had spoken about it briefly. Yeah, it's in, kind of old ish news, uh, yeah. mid November 2022. But, yeah. uh, but about two weeks ago, I think now they kind of have gone out to say, okay, guys, you can actually go into this SABC Plus streaming platform. Yep. You'll be able then to see. Um, Uvela P, maybe, yeah. you know, if they're playing on SABC. Um, and I think they have it on, is it Enco on, on, yeah, on DSTV? Yeah. yeah. So I don't know if they have that, but they do have then the free channels of the SABC 1, 2, and 3. Yeah. They have radio there. Um, yeah. Is I it, don't know. It, yeah. I mean, look, uh, we're seeing a plethora of uh, streaming services right now coming up. Mm. Almost any other brand that has quite a bit of money, they invest in that. I yeah. mean, seeing. Disney Plus coming up. We've got Amazon Prime. We've got I mean, Netflix, Showmax, Showmax yeah. you know. Um, but HBO. The, but I think at the end of the day, you can have a streaming platform, but it's about content. But also, exactly. And I think for SABC, I think it's just a natural progression. Actually, they should have done it long before Telcom yeah. One came on board. Yeah. You know? But yeah. obviously, we all know the history at the public broadcaster, which we want, you know, sort of delve into. But uh, kudos on them. Uh, I guess, yeah, the more the merrier as well. And I think, speaking of like old content, like Bovela, PN, there's a market there. I hope they know, do bring it. I, I nice. would subscribe if they're going to have do, 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 do. If, if they don't have that, I mean, why, why am I going to have SABC 1 and SABC 2? Yeah. Um, and also how we consume content is a lot different. Um, so you can't necessarily, ha- it's not, there's no ads like that. Um, you know, yeah. the ads come up on your, on your, on your phone. So yeah. how you consume content is a lot different. It's more concise. It's more to the point. Yep. Um, and also I think what's a selling point is 
exclusivity with content. Absolutely. Um, you know, I mean, I was reading how, and I, it probably did shoot up in terms of Showmax with the Devil's Dope um, documentary, for example. Yeah. Um, when it comes to Netflix, also that exclusivity of what they have there. Um, so those rights, I think, also, and maybe from a legal perspective, that probably will change the game because now, now it's that competition thing. Can you buy? Can you buy the rights to this? Whereas can another afford and and so forth so it's going to probably change the game from that um end in terms of purchasing of content um just because now there is you know an, yeah. an oligopoly system you know in place when it comes to then um and also hopefully more platforms. opportunities for content creators you know yeah um we saw like with netflix they invest the amount of investment they, they made into our economy from yeah. a content creation perspective. Correct. So they shouldn't rely on the blasts from the past. Indeed. You know, only. But and that's uh, what I'm saying. I think it, it, it can only survive so much with the blast from the past, yeah. but um, it will survive because of content. And Absolutely. like we said, content is kingdom. Yeah, it's currency. Yeah. Then, um, check us. My favorite brand, guys. Is that is that oh, your favorite brand? It is my favorite brand from how they've grown what they're doing um is it? i did say i want to go to the work at the yeah, shop right x yes shop right x yes yeah? shop right x i should have got a friend that works there exactly so yeah, so yeah. you're gonna move down to cape town yeah i think i think they've got just Austin? so much yeah. to offer and i think they understand what data mining is Absolutely. um yeah. building a consumer-centric brand yeah they, um yeah i mean those guys down there in the cape they know what they're doing you know for ah, most parts for most parts ah. <laughs> for most parts but anyway check us as we know yeah. um i think about on the 27th of jan kind of created a bit of a hoo-ha yeah. where they got our tongues wagging uh, oh. i saw on linkedin everyone was just talking about it saying, but uh, they'll have to work harder for me to start Teaching woolies, you know. <laughs> no, no, say, I mean, I don't know if I would teach woolies entirely, but um, yeah. but I think also, I think um, I remember I've always said, especially to checkers, why I fell in love with the brand is how um, they were part of um, my proposal in varsity, yeah, and we had to read the financial uh, that whole thick thing and read through and see their growth and so forth, and seeing that come to life, I think is what really? I've like. You know, it's like, I, have, I saw this. This is what they said was going to happen in five years. Oh. This is what they said was going to happen in 10 years. So seeing that come to life and their partnerships, of course, with Starbucks and the likes mm. um, and how they've revamped the stores, that's what I think I loved about it. And also then what they were moving into in terms of LSMs and how they were changing all of that, basically, or becoming a competitor. But also anyway... you kind of sort of saw it coming. Yes, because you, you had to kind of know this whole, um, the financial statements... Um, figures, the whole growth plan and so forth. So yeah. seeing it um, is like, okay. Perhaps I'd like to bring in our guest on this one. Yeah. Will you ditch Woolies for checkers? <laughs> <laughs> and I'll and you assuming you're a yeah. Woolies client. Yeah. <laughs> a customer rather. I'm all of the clients. Okay. So for me, it's not a, a ditching process. Yeah. And, value. And, yeah. and I, I value them for different reasons. Exactly. That's so you. love checkers, especially the six option because i'm very much an online uh-huh. shopper i hate shopping and going to the shops really? and i love how it does obviously learn about you you know tells you what you've ordered before reminds you of what you might have forgotten and i think the order. user journey on that app is quite i yeah. think we were laughing not so long ago to say that the infamous cheesecake yeah. is the next day they already had like the top ingredients to make cheesecake that's how just in time they are in terms of what's happening on the ground. Yeah. They've you definitely know? become, I think, a little bit more um, agile in terms yeah. of topical on yeah. things that are relevant yeah. in the culture yeah. in terms of the context. Mm-hmm. And I've seen how they've also put together great propositions where, for example, you can go on and they say, this is you know, the package for people who want to go. To Correct. Move. So they the typology weekend. now. And they've kind yeah. of told you yeah. what kind of things you might yeah. need, et cetera, yeah. for, for the weekend. So I think a great example in packaging the right benefits um from data collection and knowing your customers yeah and the woolies the cake is that woolies, yeah. I mean, there's still things i have to buy from woolies yeah standard buy me salami sticks fresh produce like woolies um, yeah. and a lot of other you know accessible little things premium stuff um, mm. from there so for me it's like an end end yeah. um, and i think all of the apps you know from that 
um, check us sixty sixty etc. All of the platforms you could ever actually even. Um, actually, so I was going to ask you about that. Say, are you using it's really Evo? Great. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Uh, yeah, definitely. Because Eva also makes it seamless in terms of my wallet and, and all of that stuff. And yeah. someone gives me a voucher at work, you know, that I can use. So. Yeah, amazing. Because uh, Check Us did uh, this past week, they advertised in the UK and in OZ, you know, to say to our people in the diaspora, to say, look, if you want to buy stuff for people at home, Check Us 6060 got you. Mm-hmm. And also to remind you that, you know, South Africa is still a lack of place to stay in which is kind of uh, fascinating for me to see a, a South African brand sort of communicate. At the t- and they did newspaper ads. Can you believe yeah. it? Yeah. Um, and, I, and funny enough, because media planning now, we don't know, do we take out newspapers? Do we put in newspapers? Are people still reading newspapers? Um, yeah. So it's always a contentious thing when it comes to media buying in terms of where to advertise. Absolutely. So, yeah. Um, I suppose then we said the reason why they were doing this was there was accessibility for um, family members in your Londons and, and, and Sydney's and the like to actually purchase for their family members here yeah. in South Africa. Absolutely. So that was also quite something. And I was saying, quite interesting, is it because there's a lot of people there yeah. that are actually have South African families mm-hmm. here? Um, and why did they think there was a need p- to position themselves as... And also say, maybe come back home. Buyani <laughs> 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 yeah, it was it was quite interesting. I think also from a price. But point also, you, I mean, I remember last year December there was some reports saying actually people are coming back, you know, because I mean the lifestyle that side. Yes, the grass may look greener from here, but once you're there, you're like, oh no, mm. the privilege that you had in South Africa, where you lived in a <laughs> in a four bedroom house with a big yard, with you know. Help. Exactly, with two helpers and all of that. So when you're outside now, you have to wash your own dishes <laughs> and you're living in an apartment, you know? I can imagine. So I think also another change. thing that they've mentioned is just the affordability. Um, I think when we're seeing the alcohol, how it was a lot less um, expensive. Interesting that they chose alcohol. Of <laughs> course. Of course. <laughs> they they a, has I mean, they, they chose them more way. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's maybe putting aspirational brands of which they're like, if you can even access this, what more mm. produce banana? Come on now. But yeah, um, gotcha. kudos to them. Uh, would love to see their progress and, and how, how it goes about. I think yeah. they've been pioneers when it comes to this um, Chica 60. 60, 60. 60. Yeah. Um, we've seen brands that had it before, yeah. but kind of then it wasn't the main thing. It was, just it was Econ. You, know, mm-hmm. you wanted, mm-hmm. yeah, Econ. Now, you yeah. know where this now became the main um uh, you know, distribution or form yeah. of distribution of which now, you know, the brands are now kind of lagging behind to say, oh, shucks, we can't even really catch up. With, and also, with like, the, I mean, the whole thing around, you know, um, buying stuff online and having to wait for days when mm, you can actually mm, get the stuff. Mm, mm. So they take those day. boxes of, yeah. you know, you can't, you don't have to, like, order last week for this week. I was good to what's going to finish, Pella. You yeah. know, they've made that quite easy, instantaneous. Um, a JIT system, basically, just in time when I need it, wherever I need it, it's done and dusted. Um, wow. Yeah. Interesting. Let's move on quickly to the next one. And what the last the one, introducing us to the industry that we're actually going to be talking about. So the yeah. Reserve Bank, um, those guys that we are... We are not sure now because I'm a reporter. I knew that. It's just a lot. Um, did you hear what the, the Reserve Bank governor said? What did he say? I get it. Um, so the politicians or the governing party uh, wants them to change the mandate, you know, the mandate of the Reserve Bank, mm. that is. And he said, you know, he's very energetic. He said, it baffles me that how much less people are reading about basic economics. <laughs> <laughs> Before telling us, <laughs> yeah, he was make firing changes. shots uh, at, <laughs> at, at, uh, at the politicians. You know, yeah, it's quite of funny. You know, <laughs> hey, and whenever he delivers all these speeches, you know, he's got so much energy. Like he's no, wait, delivering. Wait, so is yeah, that's him. That's him. Oh, okay, okay. That's uh, Lerato Khanyo's uncle. Uh, really? Yeah, no, they're related. Oh, yeah. sorry, that came out very loud. I just. Didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> so next time you want to reduce, you want the interest rate reduced, you must call the writer to call his to call her uncle. Okay. <laughs> but um, the business um, tech 
had yep. released news to say that the Reserve Bank is testing a new payment system in South Africa and is set to launch this year. And the Bank of Africa is currently testing a new rapid payment program of which making online payment a lot more easier and affordable and efficient. Oh, so what, are they going to case, uh, we'll pay faster than them? I'm assuming, and but making it a lot easier. So you don't necessarily have to have a bank account. Um, oh. You can use then your mobile and your email address. So almost like cloud trans, like, trans wow. payment thing. Yeah. So cool. quite, quite interesting. And we'll see where that also. goes. And uh, we are talking about the Reserve Bank and we are seeing our car installments are going up. Uh, Houses. <laughs> our bonds are also <laughs> going <laughs> up. Good <laughs> uh, morning. Um, welcome to the Pet and Brands Podcast. Perhaps there's something that your bank can do to make us, you know, live better somehow yeah well i'm a consumer too so you know i, yeah. I get it mm. um and obviously those are instruments you know that are used to manage monetary policy inflation etc yeah. and but i think the best thing that people can do for themselves is one what we punt a lot in my work yeah talk about money understand mm. why you know you have a particular relationship with money mm-hmm. as the almost the the platform from which you start making better choices um for yourself you know and and it starts as early as you can start i think the better um i actually had a coffee catch up yesterday morning with one of my former colleagues um who's now retired and she was just talking about how quickly she made little choices just when starting her employment about am I getting a pension fund, a provident fund, or this mm. and that, without really understanding, you know, the, the impact sure. um, of some of those things. And you work for so many years, um, finish working, and then realize, oh, actually, I'm one of those people who might not afford to w- live, live the way that I actually like to live. Hectic. Um, sure. Because but someone I said haven't really taken off that. I haven't yeah. taken you know, advantage of understanding compound interest over so many years, et cetera, yeah. and just making better choices. Mm-hmm. And I think when you understand the psychology of money and why you are a certain way, mm. you're just so much more empowered to to catch yourself making those bad decisions. Before. Versus somebody just coming <laughs> to you and say, learn about budgeting, learn about you know, all the functional stuff that we all know kind of at the back of our heads. Yeah. Um, without questioning why do we continue to behave in a, in a certain manner? Sure. Someone said, I mean, you work for 50 years mm-hmm. and you get to enjoy that uh, pension fund for 11. Yes. Why bother? <laughs> well, I mean, do you want to stop working and like, <laughs> you're a burden to your kids and everybody else and all of that stuff? Yeah. And I remember actually when I started my job um, at NetBank um, and one of the things that I did was, you know, meet with one of the financial advisors and he asked me you know basic questions like you know okay when you retire like you know how do you want to to live like are you going to want a new car every five years you know mm-hmm. are you going to have paid off your house or not um what do you have now when a holiday and home. when he gave me the figure of okay if you want to live this way in Tabi saying between now and then this is kind of how much you you, you, know, you need to have saved and do you does that you also factor to, in inflation as well yeah, factoring in all of those little variables sure. that that you might not have affected in because even when he measures okay you've got a house now you've done it because mm-hmm. you know you've got a certain level of affordability but if interest rates went up by this much are you still really going to afford afford mm. you know the the same house so you have to think about it that way as you make those decisions and either decide to maybe downgrade your choice of car or whatever <laughs> it may be um or really get on the bus of how am I going to make this much money? Because I really do want to live a fabulous life. Mm. When I retire, I don't want to become a burden on anybody else. Um, yeah. So, sure. But let's take a step back of where it all started. I mean, you didn't just start working at NetBank. Mm-hmm. Um, you didn't start, you know, at, uh, at Mars. You started at Mars. Started at Mars. You started at Mars. Mm-hmm. Take us, is marketing something that you always wanted to do in your... No, so Life. I'm also one of those roundabout people. <laughs> I don't want to say, but yeah. you know what I'm saying. I actually studied <laughs> economics and statistics. But economics and marketing, same words yeah. of good, right? and I think that's why it made sense for me. Mm-hmm. And I was lucky to start my first job in the FMCG industry at a company like Mars, where the graduate program was really wonderful in that, you know, you could almost build it as you go and decide yeah. where you wanted to end up in, 
in the business. Sure. Oh, it, it was one of those where you rotate, you move departments. Yeah, yeah. And even though I came in there as an economics graduate and I thought maybe I'll look in procurement or, you know, the revenue function of the business. Mm-hmm. Um, once I'd gotten a little bit more information working in, with different teams in trade marketing, I had to move to KZN to work in sales, etc. and really understand um, how the business is, is built. And that's the beauty of FMCG because as a marketer, you really are in charge of you know, the full service yeah. of, of the business. Um, then I, I made that choice and it made sense for me. Um, economics is obviously good what, in terms of... What drew marketing. you to marketing? Like, what was that draw card that's like, okay, <laughs> I want to I wanna be in marketing? I'm curious about uh-huh. people, their behavior, um, and how you can solve some of those problems in a way that adds value mm-hmm. in people's lives, um, but also obviously makes money for the business because it must be a going concern uh, Got you. as well. So I think that mix between the commercial side mm-hmm. of, of the function, because you're really there to grow the business, um, and the brand, which means you need to deliver value, adding stuff for your, for your customers. Yeah. And obviously also the art of it, you know, working with creative minds and, and people um, really building very engaging, memorable um, pieces um, of work across the board really, really um, drew me to that. And that's how I ended up finishing my graduate program in a marketing function and yeah. um, having worked in all of these different ones. Um, and at about two and a half years, I was done. And in my, my first marketing role in, sure. in the business. Yeah. So now when you talk of like sort of exciting campaigns that you got to work on, which campaign in, in those times that you like I'm most proud of? Oh, I, I had back a hand in, in it. Yeah, back in the day. <laughs> back in the day. There's probably two. Yeah. At Mars, um, I would definitely say the calorie conversion program. So Mars, one of the big products that they sold in, in South Africa is pet food. So pedigree, whiskers, oh, yeah, dog yeah. and cat food. And, and here I am thinking you're going to say special care. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> no. And they, we had a program that we had to run, um, primarily in the townships and rural areas, hmm. where you are transforming the calories that pets eat. Um, oh. Because you figured out that wow. if they eat a certain type of pet food, you know, it's better for them in terms of their health. They've got their shiny coats, their stools are better, all of these lovely things. And um, oh. how do you actually convert them from eating, you know, table scraps and all of the stuff that people give them. <laughs> <laughs> and really teach people that it's actually more cost effective yeah. to buy food. Um, pet food and it's also better for, for the dog. For the pet I mean for the pets in, in yeah. the long run. That is um, so interesting to yeah. find such a challenge because I think we're laughing to say so at home, Baba how he treats the dogs and how we treat the dogs are too different. Mm. And we're just like, hi Pel. Kasi mentality. It's yeah. a pet. Hey, just, just take <laughs> part. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I'm so, I'm so yeah. You know, yeah, you just, getting all the right nutrients. You know? There's nothing wrong with treating mm. the pet. I've got my own now. I also, we also adopted a yeah. dog from the SPCA last year. Yeah. But you know, you you quite right. It is food. a. I mean, we're looking at the pet insurance. Um, but I, I like I say, it's a psyche. Yeah. Um, then we had to understand. Pela umdana, pela lumt. Those for inoculations, yeah. Yeah. you know, it's the tick fevers and yeah. stuff for them. Yeah. So Absolutely. It is, yeah. Looking after them is, you, it's a pet. It, is, it really yeah. is a pet. It and is. I think and I mean, maybe mentality. Lots of things now, how that industry has grown. Grown, yeah. 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 I look at my own dog. It's like, <laughs> oh, go yes. to for a massage as yes. well. Yes. <laughs> yes, the dog goes to school twice. There's aftercare. Oh, yes, the dog. Yeah, to, to go and dog. be socially. There's people who ferry their pets to their Correct. school, so it's like a lot bigger than mm. just go to school twice a week. What do they learn? To bark. How do you be surprised? Like how do you be a better dog? Yeah, how to, them just staying with yeah, humans. Yeah, pet school. So, oh, what kind of dog do you have? It's a mixed breed. Okay. I was told it's a, it's a Jack Russell cross, <laughs> but it's really not. <laughs> By the time I went to pick it up after the adoption process is over, because it's actually quite an, an, a an great intense, process yeah. that the SPCA has. They come into oh, the house it? to mm. see oh, that, just, you know, the good environment and all of yeah. that stuff. Yeah. So you just don't get a dog no, and be like, oh, just go, I want this one. Here's a new home. Bye. Mm-hmm. Oh. And, you know, they brought him. By the time I went to fetch him, Mm. Oh, I could tell. Uh, this is not, not enough Jack Russell in here. Yeah. So he's definitely got some fox terrier bits, some yeah. Dalmatian bits. He's got Aww. lovely spots. Yeah. Um, yeah, and his name is Thursday. 
Oh. So that's the name they gave him at the SPCA. Oh, but when he arrived, because he was born on a Thursday, or whatever, I think his mom was the rescue that they brought in pregnant. Yeah. And then um, when he arrived at our house on a Thursday, we were like, dude, yeah. come on now. For Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So interesting. Yeah. So, and I'm but, sure yeah. it, 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 g- it gives you a run for your money because. Definitely. Yeah. That, yeah. that breed. Yeah. yeah. But I finally gave in to, you know, the kids' demands. And yeah, now I'm the, the dog's person. Yeah. Because I think I've spent so much time with, the with it, with working Thursday. from home and all of that stuff. Yeah. Great. So it was that program at Mars that you yeah. had to go to the township. Really fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And I think my second really wonderful time and experience in, you know, the former years of my career, yes. definitely on Doritos. Okay. And that really grew my love for, for youth marketing. And I think having to take a global brand um, that the business at the time was ready to say this thing is not really working for us here in South Africa. Whoa. And really do, you know, the actual scientific work with R&D teams to change the flavors to those mm. of us South Africans, change the name. So go from intergalactic flavor to telling people South Africans want to know it's sweet chili. Mm. <laughs> that's so true. Yeah, yeah it's it's some yeah. scientific Changing name. a cheese profile to, you know, a cheddar one and not yeah, cheese, exactly. for example. Okay. Oh. And how much that really so changed localizing. the brand. Yeah, yeah. Localizing it in terms of the functional qualities of the actual product, but also being given the freedom that I was given in that business to wow. really explore, find new agencies to work with who were great in terms of youth marketing, yeah. who were pioneers in terms of digital marketing back in those days, you know, social media, already using things like QR codes and the packs, you know, to launch yeah. limited flavors in the night, where at night, you know, you could put it in front of your webcam and watch a special concert by Rihanna or whatever, and those sure. benefits of like a global brand where you could you know, take some stuff yeah. um, from global and really build mm. it for, for local. So I definitely enjoyed being like the Doritos girl when I was still at Simba <laughs> wow. and it's, seeing it grow like yeah. now to a brand that's one of the top brands um, and really keeping up that compounded annual growth on the brand over the years. Yeah. Uh, interesting. So I'm pretty sure when you see it in the shelves, like you, I saved you. Oh, very much. My <laughs> 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 Otherwise, the business was gonna can you. And yeah. but Nick, you also worked on Nick Mix. Yeah. How is that like? Was also fun. Um, very different markets. Was it? Th- yeah. I mean, during those know, times with th- that guy with yes, the hat. I was there when he changed from a clown to yeah. the guy that he actually is now. <laughs> and, <laughs> wow. And Nick the Neck, as we used to call him. And yeah. uh, I mean, that's a very different category. Extrudes. I mean, you know, you find similar types of chips in like clear bags. Sure. Day, yeah. Them. So to try and build a brand that people actually want to buy for a premium yeah. versus, you know, mushroom shram or whatever. It was, <laughs> um, wow. it was really also interesting. So Great. Different um, market set, much more mess. And, mm. But with its own unique challenges from a category perspective in terms of who else you, you're competing against. You know, yeah. Brands that don't even, there's no name. Yeah. Sure. I mean, there's the, the adage that goes that uh, if you want to be a great marketer, you really have to cut your teeth in FMCG. Yeah, I believe well, that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? I believe What are some of the things, I mean, you, 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 you went from FMCG, mm-hmm. telco, now financial, financial s- services, you know. Yeah. What's so special about... FMCG that you get to carry, you know, I think first throughout of all, other industries. In FMCG, they've understood quite early that marketing has a seat at the table. Mm. And it's a primary lever in terms of growing the business. It's not those people who do TV ads at the end of it once we've told them what the product is mm. and whatever it is. Yeah. That's not what it is. So the decision, for example, to go and build a new factory let's say when I was working um, at Simba, it's not because an operations manager woke up and said, I want a new factory. It's because marketing people have been looking very closely at demand, at capacity Mm -hmm. to deliver to our customers to say, listen, in this many years, we're not going to be able to deliver enough product because that's how much it's growing. So you really get to work with all the functions um, within the business and you have to be really solid in terms of understanding the science of marketing and the commercial responsibility um, 
of marketers because we it's nice when we at the fun events and all of this. Yeah, <laughs> the launches. They just grow the brand in the business. If the business is not growing, you're not doing your job. Sure. If people don't have a clear view of who the customer is within the business, then you're not representing that customer um within the business. And I think they've kind of really understood that whereas a lot of other industries the idea of thinking with segment marketing head um really was something that came um after I mean, when I left FMCG to join Vodacom yeah um they had built a pioneering team of segment marketers and a lot of them taken from FMCG businesses you know people who understand how to continue growing a brand that's 100 years old sure. um because I guess the business had been after so many years of just being able to grow purely from new products and technology you get to a point where it's saturated and people have like two sim cards and whatever it is then you know what else do you do sure um so to find marketers who were really able to get to grips with key insights about a customer finding those new nuggets of where we can continue to grow um leveraging all sorts of things including technology as well Oh. I think I want to touch on I think you've you've made you made point to say I mean you have I don't even know the SIM cards that I have are probably everywhere you know um and I think banking um would also be similar um where I think on average an adult has about 5.3 bank accounts you know one has this value one this is where my house is this is where my car is this is where this is but how do we as a as a brand um and even for entrepreneurs in the you know uh, an industry where we're all having the same thing that we're selling how do i stand out how how do i become you know that one the chosen one you know as as a brand mm. for me in financial services and i i think working for netbank i i don't think i've ever been more in touch with a company's purpose mm. um as i am now um and at netbank the purpose is really how do we use our financial expertise sure. to be able to really deliver impactful outcomes for you know people their families society mm. at large so i think across all the continuum of activities that we perform in the customer experience that's the essence that we try and and bring forth how do we make sure it's really an impactful outcome for this customer mm. and because how we measure especially in the consumer world um really how well you're doing is about like you're saying people have lots of products yeah. anyway it's about being main bank of that person mm. you know mm. so if their salary is coming into their um they've got the largest share of their wallet of financial products and services with a particular bank and i think the the sophistication in terms of how the we've learned certainly over um the last few years one leveraging the psychology of money which is something different that other banks um haven't really um delved into um a lot and really making people understand why they're making the decision, the decision that they may be making and why they have a certain relationship with money um but also looking after them um and i think it's well expressed especially in our wealth um products as a connected human being um i mean so if you are here you want to be saying like i'm saying you know yes you're a mother maybe you're going to be a student this year <laughs> yes. again you know and you like your hiking you know maybe yeah. you're going to be a philanthropist maybe, you know all of these things how do we connect all of these different facets um of your life to make it work for you because the more any of your product um providers or service providers really understand who you are the more relevant propositions they can build and give to you um over time and when you can do that obviously a customer is more satisfied over time and that means a larger lifetime value for for the business mm. um as well so there's really really important focus on the relationships that bankers form with 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 the business and i mean i was an app bank customer before i joined and started working for for net bank and i always used to tell them you know i've never really made a conscious choice about like which bank I want when I was a student mm-hmm. I just banked with whoever was giving me money I wanted the same bank so it must clear on the same day I didn't yeah. want issues of yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 so I was with a different bank then I started work I didn't really you know when I wanted to buy a car and whatever there's all these offers so I'd go with whoever's given me the cheapest yeah. one mm. and when I joined Netbank it was because at the time uh, we were buying a home and they were doing my husband's business banking and they obviously sweetened the deal, the deal by saying mm. you know if you also come on board 
you know, this is how much better the yeah. home loan deal was going to be. And that was really the reason. So it was a very basic reason I joined. I mean, that's a very important yeah. reason. <laughs> <laughs> but having joined in the professional banking side of NetBank was really, like, amazing. For me because mm. I'd been this person. I was already, you know, earning whatever the money might have been at the time. But my other bank at the time was not really treating me recognizing <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah in yeah. that way yeah um do you know who i am you know like watch this or really coming to you i mean i've had especially when i was still studying um uh, when i was doing my masters there's lots of banks who are clever like who will come to you at that point you might not be qualifying as a wealth customer or whatever yeah. maybe then i mean but the young really professionals are uh, offering yeah. is They're like you're a young professional this is where you this is where your career is going we think you're really going to be Mm, yeah, a person that we're yeah. interested in yeah. in a few years' time. So we're happy to take you on now, even though you're not quite yeah, and give you the benefits. <laughs> the person, but because yeah. we know that you're for everything that we've seen about you, we think that you're gonna be mm. the person um, pretty soon. I like how you've, you've you've mentioned that, and maybe just also, I mean, we it's kind of consumer typologies, so yeah. the wealth, um, you know, the ones with who are wealthy, and you, that probably is your older generation. Um, then there's the mass market millennials who yeah. are either at you know plateauing or getting to the point of where it's a comfortable senior positions for a while then there's of course our gen z's who are just coming in mm. um you know to start off with and it's either you're following through that journey um i think net bank is that bank that when you kind of start you kind of grow i know i mean mom was a a net bank client for long mm. like she was she was that client she, Know, and that's how we knew NetBank. Yeah. But now, how has technology also played a role? I know you've also shared in terms of how you were that digital girl back in the day before mm -hmm. we knew what digital marketing was. Um, but how has that now impacted banking um, You know, right now? In a huge way. In fact, one of our last campaigns was really about almost really telling people you have to see us in a different way. Mm -hmm. um, because now, technology, I think, is so pervasive in terms of how we you know, collect data, use it to provide the right features to, to people. Um, and in the last few months, we've been talking a lot about, from a consumer perspective, um, products like, let's say, um, money message, mm. um, for example, how, you know, banking is now cardless, you know, you pay with your, your phone, phone and, yeah. and all of the stuff, mm. and how we've made it easy if, let's say, you, you know, an Instagram entrepreneur, you can now send invoices, and oh, wow. to your customers on WhatsApp and get paid, you know, through, okay. through, through WhatsApp, etc. So I think there's been quite a lot of um, gains mm. in, in that particular space um, and focusing on youth, obviously, in the unlocked um, by NetBank um, proposition world um, and our big youth platform called YouthX um, has been about how do we make sure we're empowering, you know, the youth in terms of the entrepreneurship, mm. um, aspirations and um, the education etc not only through the right financial products and um, but also by making sure we are unlocking the potential and really connecting them to the right experts to coaching um, you know to advice and counsel and people who will really walk um, that journey with you because it's really really very important yeah sure and now how I mean there's new entrants in the market. Mm -hmm. So, and, and again, in entrepreneurship is that you're either the new entrant or you're the leader. But how, how do you even, how do you maintain being a leader, um, a category leader, um, you know, wherever? I think you use creativity, firstly, to really and truly live your purpose and to grow the business. And that lends itself in certain different innovations. How are you doing, making things easier, better, different in a way that's value adding for the customer and really grows the business. Um, so something as simple as, I mean, I talked a little bit when we were talking checkers um, about Evo by NetBank, yeah. for example, um, is one of those things where Evo is not, you know, it's a super shop, so it's not about groceries, for yeah. example. Um, and so that doesn't mean, you know, a bank is not just about the transactional services in your bank account, mm -hmm. you can now use, you know, that, that platform, which is open to everyone, by the way, not just net bank customers, to be able to, yes, do your shopping, mm -hmm. and yes, find things that are services and almost have a concierge service where you can ask, you know, 
Mm. Yeah. Restaurants, you can book a meal, mm. you can, yeah. you know, book a service, let's say for plumbing and, and that, those sort of things. Sure. So it's really just, you know, being more entrenched in people's lives. Um, and obviously all, all of these things ultimately at the end of the day um, are going to be accessed through some sort of a trustworthy um, financial platform. So that's really still something that I, I think really, really um, valuable um, in the business to be a trusted brand mm. that takes people's money um, seriously and where people can expect a certain level. So they're not putting service. it in their mattress. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So actually, I'll, I'll, yeah. <laughs> I, I want to double tap on the uh, NetBank Evil. I mean, because as a super app, and I think a lot of people not, don't know what sort of benefits they can derive from the platform, particularly entrepreneurs. I know you can, as a service provider, can list my, my services there. If I sell products, I can also list my, my products there. So how what benefits can our entrepreneurs, uh, listeners, yeah. can derive <laughs> from from just the, the, the super app yeah. that is I mean, it's is a Apple. platform, so that yeah. means for me, in the technology or digital terms, it's truly connecting customers and merchants. Yes. Um, so as a merchant, um, you know, you could say, oh, I've got a specialist, I'm selling, you know, these types of products or whatever it may be. Meet with the Evo commercial team, you know, so they see if this is something worthwhile that the customers need, yeah. etc. Do all sorts of testing, and and really be able to to try it out um, and put it on the app. I mean, I think we've surpassed now 1.6 million um, users, and still oh, that's growing. massive. So I mean, registrations will continue to grow, and I think the 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 level and complexity of the services being offered will also yeah. continue to, to evolve as we get the right merchants for whatever is a you know, burning customer need. And I know that you can now buy an iPhone on Evo. Yeah. Mm, even yeah. Smeg appliances. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Great <laughs> deal. <Yeah>. Right? <laughs> um, funny enough, I'm seeing an air fryer. There was a, a post I think I saw in the morning that this is the, the, the adult peer pressure is an air fryer. <laughs> like yeah. I got one of those. I, I don't know. I've, I've used it very few times. I don't think I've quite, I've quite, yeah. And it was in a box I've never for a used while. One. Yeah. I need this thing. <laughs> but, yeah. I, I think I if I have to only use it like twice <laughs> a month. But there's, there's no need there. You know? But I remember actually where we used to uh, have our offices at. Um, there used to be a guy. He used to do me. Yes. To be like, <laughs> 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 ah, we air fryer. Ah, we are you an adult even? You know, it's like that must have. You know, I do. I remember when it came in, I was like air fryer. Yeah. Yeah. I still don't have it. But yeah. needless to say, I mean, it said that you know, um, chief marketing officers are no longer seen as simply brand ambassadors. You know, we are responsible for advertising, events, and promotional items. Many now assume the responsibility for driving growth, owning the entire customer experience, regardless. Channel. Would you agree with the statement? Absolutely. And I, I wouldn't say it's a now thing. Mm. I think it's a people underst- coming to understand yeah. what, what marketing <laughs> uh, is thing. I mean, yeah. I used to have a friend, I won't mention where he used to work, <laughs> but he used to um, entertain clients a lot, you know, and he'd take me to these fancy events that they have. He was my friend from Varsity. And he'd always say, oh, come, and then you're going to meet our marketing ladies. Come, what marketing? <laughs> oh, the ones who bring, like, the Gifts and buy the tickets. <laughs> Arrange the, the dinner. caps. Oh, like, excuse me. That's marketing. Not market. Maybe the event specialist or something, but that's not marketing. <laughs> you can't call that marketing for the organization you work for, booking dinners and, you know, PA. And promotional yeah. items. Yeah, I would I be so offended. Like, yeah. Woman. I yeah. take it personally. Yeah. No, I do. <laughs> I do too. I do. That it's like that struggling artist type of role. Yo. You know? Yeah. So definitely, yeah. and that's what I'm saying. If you are not there to grow the business, one, you know, who's going to invite you to the table? Like, what are you doing? Then you really are the person at the last mile mm. of things, making some pretty things. I always say to my team, you know, you're not a coloring in department. It's not the place where people ask, come ask yeah. for a t-shirt and event in the cap. Like, you need to grow <laughs> the brand and the business. Yeah, yeah that is so yeah. true. Yeah. I mean, w- w- with the amount of experience that you have and the industries that you've worked in and for the brands that you work in, what advice would you give your younger self? Hmm. I think advice that I actually got, which I really treasure, um, 
when I started at NetBank, um, and I had a, a, a quick catch up with the CEO of the bank, Mfundo Nkutlu, and uh, he was just asking me, like, yeah, how's it going? And and I was telling him, oh, this is what I like. These are the things that I'm a bit worried about, you know. Yeah. Um, and he told me, you know, don't assimilate. And I really love that. And I think everywhere you are, don't just go into the environment to continue doing sure. whatever um, is being done there. Really be brave to put up your hand, say some crazy things, which I did often in times of my career. Like in Doritos, I came there and I said, Guys, I'm going to double the size of this brand in two years. And okay. People laughed, actually. You know, in that meeting. I'm assuming, though, you did and do your, your numbers. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and, and it happened, you, yeah. you checked your numbers. They just didn't have the same craziness and <laughs> okay. Yeah. So mm. really, don't assimilate. Um, back yourself. Mm. And really, really just like, be brave around the impact that you, you want to make in adding value to customers and the business. Yeah. Are you a reader? Yeah. Yeah, you write like a reader. I mean, you speak <laughs> like a reader. I mean, I was listen- I was reading your your intro to say I build and grow loved brands that win hearts, minds, and wallets. <laughs> <Okay>, no wallets. <laughs> <laughs> but why? You know, I mean, we've seen your career, um, and, but we've also seen your educational, scholastic um, development. And how important is it to also stay or maintain educated? Um, and I think, I mean, it's from the MBA, mm. the Eco's part. Um, CMSA, um, the only CMSA, I, I only know CSA, yeah. and then I learned of CMSA as I grew older, but the <laughs> importance the of that, yeah. very important, and I think education holds a very special place in my heart, mm. uh, I mean, I was telling you guys when I walked in here that I grew up in Soweto, and I, you know, I grew up in very humble beginnings in my grandmother's house, you know, with my single mother was very young, mm. um, but I really did well academically at school, that there was a gentleman um, at Gray's College um, back in the days who thought of an idea of really getting companies to rally behind very students who were very strong academically in the townships but didn't have the means to get a better education. And he developed a program called the Gifted Child's Program which was launched in Soweto. They used to have classes in Punda Center on the Saturdays or whatever it is. Kids from Alex, Soweto, and whatever. And I was one of those kids. Mm. And one of the things that happened through that process when I was about nine years old is that I got a bursary not to go to a really nice private school and all of that stuff. Mm. Yes, you know, touching <laughs> from my yeah. grandmother's house, going to the school, etc., mm. and having people fund my education. You know, sure. from that level. I mean, I was in primary school. Mm. Um, up until you know I, 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 I finished school and I value it for the opportunity that it's given me to truly be a change agent in my own family be able to turn those circumstances around sure. and grow a love for it where um, you know other people in your family become empowered and we don't all get to depend on each other forever and ever and mm. ever. You know, it's mm. not something that happens in Tasmania. So I really believe in the power of education in changing people's um, circumstance. But I certainly do love school. Um, enjoyed, yes, my undergrad. Um, did my master's, even though when I walked into it, I was three months pregnant with baby number three. Um, and my husband was doing it at the same time. Cool. So we had crazy times, you know. So we had this baby. Our oldest was three. There was oh, one in the hectic. middle. Here's this one coming. Oh, my so goodness. Was but like Talk I about say, wanting to create a film. Yeah, you know, but I was in this room. I was a senior brand manager. Here were CFOs and CMOs and all of these, you know, really fancy people yeah. in the same class that I got to connect to, which to date, I mean, it's like 10, 11 years later. Interesting. And, and you survived really, all of that because yeah. I remember when I was doing my MCOM, mm. we used to call it the divorce course. Yeah. <laughs> MBA. That's what I was like, MBA, I mean, the, so, uh, the same thing. So, it was actually one of my lecturers that I remind that he was an economics lecturer. Yeah. He also walked in and said, you know, on this course, yeah. people get divorced. Yeah. And then, oh. he said, then he said, and then there are some crazy people who decide to have babies while they're on this course. Oh. And then it was we, a jab. Yeah. And then we walk out to tea and he sees me with this big stomach. He's like, oh. Like, yeah, I'm gonna write your exam next week. I'm not yeah. gonna miss a beat, and I didn't like, I didn't, sure. um, you know, like, you know, postpone any studies. I don't know, is it uh, because apparently pregnancy brain can also make you shoot up like your intelligence? Yeah, for me, I was quite energetic, I think. Okay, mostly, you know, 
And like, you know, anyway, but now you, you did say that your younger son is, is into sports, is it? Yeah. <laughs> so that's, oh, that's, where you, that's, why. that's where you drew your energy, yeah. energy from. Yeah, and that's why he's the NBA baby. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, and I had fun doing it. And, you know, it's something that's going to continue for me. Um, yeah. You know, I do want to pursue. So you're going to be doctors? Yeah. That's, that's amazing. For the year. Okay. I do want to, you know, really make an, a contribution in terms of business thought leadership that helps us change certain business policies and decisions um over. Oh. so i'm not in it for i want to be a lecturer or, oh yeah you know, but that academic researcher mm. yeah but it's more can... from a business thought leadership perspective mm. of things that are practical to really help shape how we think about things in the continent yeah, mm. yeah talking about thought leadership uh, do you believe in mentorship uh, i believe in it I have not leveraged it enough to okay. be honest. Yeah. Um in my own life and are you mentoring people? Yes, yeah, I am. People, yeah. Yeah. I am. I think indirectly and I've, indirectly. Yeah. I and I think I've 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 kind of learned through it through other people, you know, who've come oh. to me and said, oh, no, can I talk to you about this and whatever mm. it may be." And yeah, I think I struggled with really leveraging mentorship properly just from my own personality and you know I'm a person who really wants to connect with somebody. Like I don't just go to people because they've got mm. a fancy title and say, "Can oh, yeah. you oh, please mentor me?" Yeah. 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 <laughs> Actually, I have to really respect something special about yeah. that person, and it's not always that easy to to find. Indeed, and also there needs to be like that connection. You know? yeah. It doesn't help claiming that you're being mentored by this popular mm. person, but yet they don't even have mm. time for you. Yeah. Um, and also you just don't connect yeah. you know, I, actually i have a, i had an instance i think two weeks ago um we went to a meeting we were pitching the yogas you know there's this guy like big guy popular you've seen him uh, seen him on tv and he did well for himself from a business perspective and he was like he'd like to work with us on the yogas i mean having him on mm. would be like you know mm. but i just mm. <laughs> The connection wasn't the there, connection wasn't there yeah, and I had to, to and it. I had to decline and yeah. say no. I, I, I just can't bring myself to mm. just yeah. yeah. I did a, a lovely program last year with McKinsey uh, called the Black Leadership Academy program, and it just oh. combines executives across the world, like black executives. Sure. Um, and it's not obviously first of all that's like so inspiring when you see all these amazing black people all over right. the world doing yeah. yeah. amazing things. But in part of the mentorship, one of the great things I learned there is really people asking themselves, because often people go into a mentorship relationship wanting to get something. Mm. You know, think about what you're going to give, give to, absolutely. to that person. And don't just have a mentor because it's somebody in your line of work. And uh, you need yeah. different people. People who are going to challenge you and say, no, yeah. this doesn't make sense. Yeah. Uh, you know, you need those devil advocates. You need people, yes, who are in your career and can open some doors for you and all of yeah. those things. So you need to think about it, I think, broadly, but really question yourself in terms of what are you adding and mm-hmm. are you really committed to you know, giving something back in yeah. the context of that relationship. My friend Karav always says, you know, people ask me to do a meet, I always tell them, okay, let's meet at 5 a.m. at Tasha's and then you can see the one <laughs> Tasha's who are not No, it is true. Yeah. 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 How, how, how yeah. much so do you really, really want, want this? Yeah. 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 You know, I, I mean... Okay, five I, yeah, I, I th- I'm quite passionate <laughs> about this mentorship uh, sort of topic, and I think we can go on and on about it. And I also always tell, even because yeah, I also now get requests to mentor people. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I always say, look, I mean, it also, also, you need to bring something to the table, you know, at, at the end of the day. And sometimes, it, it, and, I, and I say the easiest way to get a mentor is to see what they're, study the mentor first, get to know what they are about, then also pitch yourself to add value in one of the things that they... If you see that maybe all this person does philanthropic work and in the end it's got an NGO there, go mm. volunteer. Because the more time you spend with the person, that's when you can, yeah. you can build the relationship and sort of um, grow from there. I like just saying, okay, can I please have an hour of your time once a month? Come through, we sit in a boardroom like this and we just chat, chat, and that's mm. it. I don't think that's the best way to, to do it and approach... Um, mentorship because at the end of the day like we said earlier on the connection needs to be there you know absolutely yeah, yeah. and know what you want you know 
Sometimes yeah. you just want to ask somebody a question, so don't say you need a mentorship from yeah. a person. <laughs> <laughs> I've met a lot of strangers, actually, where, you know, people will send me messages on LinkedIn. Yeah. You know, I've seen what you've studied in your career. I'm in a similar place, but I'm struggling to just unlock this. Maybe it's just one coffee meeting, and that's what it is. You know? oh. yeah. But don't try a big campaign. It also comes with specific out of questions. Every single person you have a question for or that you admire. Yeah, and yeah. I was going to touch on that in terms of also mentorship, is, it doesn't have to be forever. Um, because I think you you kind of feel now that ish have to be yeah. no it's it, it's time bound. Um, one mentorship which I loved um, was one where I said I wanted to come and shadow, and they said okay cool. And I remember they came back. Um, this was when it was in production. I was like yo, now they've yeah. come back. What do I want? You know, and yeah. my lecturer was like, okay, so say when you want to go, how many hours you want to do, what do you want to get out of there, and then be prepared. You know, so that you know, I'm moving from department to, to department. What am I getting out of each department? You doing your own kind of, um, you know, yeah. KPI and, and measuring yourself to say, okay, I've achieved that. I've had the opportunity to sit in the in the room and see a Black Steer advert, how mm. it started and how it ended. You know, all of that. So, I mean, I'm a fan for mentorship, but again, it is time bound. If you need it to be time bound. Oh, no, you're speaking about time bound. You came here and you stayed forever. Oh. <laughs> But for our listeners out there, we've yeah. had an amazing guest um, yeah. by the name of Masintabi Seng Sope Matecha. Did I say it right? It Mat- Mat- oh, Mat- 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 <laughs> who is the executive head um, group marketing at Nedbank. Yeah. And that wraps up our um, segment. Four more of them. Yeah. Um, Thank you guys. But before that, before we end the show, um, and, and just also reiterating, her answering our burning questions around how to actually stand out as a brand where all the brands are probably selling the same thing. And she's touched on creativity. I think that was the... Creativity yeah. and your purpose being your North Star. Don't dilly-dally. Mm. Just yeah. say things because they're popular at the time. Mm. Mm. But also <laughs> I mean, that goes, that goes for authenticity, I think. <laughs> yeah. um, because I think then you, you kind of are like, mm, I'm not sure though, you know. I, there's times when you're in a meeting and you're like, I'm not sure what I'm doing. I'm not sure what I'm doing. I'm not sure what I'm doing. But yeah, we've touched on mentorship. We've touched on education. We've touched on banking sector. Um, so it's been a fun one. Yeah, indeed. indeed. And to continue um, yeah. the fun. Yeah. Now we continue to the... This is the fun part of the podcast. Yeah. Which uh, many guests have said, look, this was fun. Yeah. When so I, I'm assuming right. you're when also going right. to say the same thing. Yeah, when they get it right. <laughs> <laughs> so we have our POB podcast brand quiz. Yeah. Where you have five him. questions. Um, and as an eco student, this is nothing new. Why is he negative miking? Why is he multiple? <laughs> so oh up your way. alley, you know. Yeah, I want um, to be louder. this. <laughs> <laughs> And what we'll do is, of course, when it is correct, we pat you. Get a pat. Get a pat. But if it is incorrect, get you some palm. Okay. You know. Um, But of course, we do not condone violence. Uh, First question: Which brand or product comes to mind when you hear the tagline? Maybe she's born with it. Maybe it's Maybelline. Uh Uh Well. I was going to say, is it gone? Yay, uh, you're a customer. Soft and free. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. So. Now let's move into the kitchen. Yeah. You know? And I mean, she's been in FMCG, so this should be easy. Exactly. How many tomatoes are in the bottle of... All gold. gold. 36. Ah! <laughs> I think this is too easy. Now. She is I'm, on I'm fire. Not sure. I'm not sure. We didn't even give you like <laughs> options and stuff. I'm not sure. Well, let's go to the numbers a bit. Can you guess how many bank accounts, active bank accounts, um, have been opened to date? Is it over 40 million? Uh huh. Is it over a billion? Or is it over 50 million? But wait, this is in a South African context, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. It said that 85% of our adults. Really? Over a billion? <laughs> over a billion? <laughs> I mean, we are only about 56. 50, yeah, 50 something. 15 million doesn't 56 sound million. right. 56 million? Really? Well, you are right. It doesn't sound right because it's not right. But a billion, I see. Somewhere so, between that. But what, <laughs> that I mean, billion. it would mean that every person has, has about 100 account. bank accounts. If you think about it, including oh, yeah, businesses. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's just over 40 million. So that million. one is uh, over 40. Yeah, over 40 million. Okay. Yeah. Next question. All right. You know Zambak, the brand. Mm-hmm. Where was it originally founded? Which country rather? Is it South Africa? Is it India? Or is it England? Zambak. Makoya. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say South Africa. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you did what is it? Exactly. You did she fell right? for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually England. Really? Yeah. 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 England. Yeah. <laughs> so that when you talk about localization, I mean, this is yeah. one that entrenched itself. Yeah. You know? um, going also to the pattern brands. Website, you can find an article that actually shares around Zambak, Sunlight, really? Aromat. The brands that we thought were yeah. South, Afri- South, South African, Africans. That yeah? actually, we were like, how oh, Mara, they are here most with us. We've exactly. grown up with them. <laughs> Lastly, which brand does not fall under the Mr. Price group? Is it Studio 88, Yappy Chef, or Bodman's? Does Bodman's still exist? Um, mm-hmm. Dun, 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 dun. No! <laughs> That's a slap! That was a recent buy. I mean, yeah. joke. Yeah. I think yeah. on, Twitter, <laughs> on Twitter and everything was They're just so like. Fancy. It is. So the yeah. joke was that. Is that. No, I'm sure Mr. Priceman, but the Riju. Mr. Man. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, it was a recent uh, purchase. Oh, a, uh, yeah, acquisition. acquisition. Yeah. acquisition. Yeah. yeah. I think the, the latest one was Studio 88. I think that wrapped up that acquisition. Yeah. Tabi saying thank you so much for indulging us. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and for teaching us. I think every opportunity we get to actually talk with our guests is not Absolutely. only for our listeners, but yeah. definitely for us um, as co hosts, um, as entrepreneurs, yes. as very much being within the marketing industry. We get yeah. to learn and we get to live through, I think, what we've taken from our guests. So Absolutely. Thank you. And I hope that our listeners remember the lesson do not assimilate. <laughs> They're big yeah, words. Don't. <laughs> yeah. don't. Just don't do it. Yeah. You won't stand yeah. out. Thank you so much, guys. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank Love you. you. All right. So, how do people connect with you? If they wanna, if they were like, oh my goodness, yeah. I wanted to I be my mentor. Question. <laughs> I, have a question I, have. I have mentorship requests. <laughs> well, LinkedIn, I think, is the best. Yeah. I'm saying shop in my Great stuff. Yeah. And that's where I also yeah, get profile. got to connect with her. So okay. yeah, it works. Yeah. She does reply. Yeah. <laughs> Great sure. stuff. Yeah. But thank you to everybody who is listening to us. Like I say, wherever and whenever you're listening to us, have a beautiful day, evening, morning. Um, and yeah, may, make sure to connect and engage with us at Absolutely. all times. Don't forget to subscribe, like, yes. click on that notification yes. bell. Do all sorts of things to make sure that this podcast does grow and does reach as many people as possible. And definitely connect with us on social media at POB underscore podcast. That's the same for our LinkedIn. Um, and have a blast. Yeah. Connect with us, talk to us, um, engage with us. Um, tell us if you want to join the podcast. No, I'm joking. Not like that. But yeah. have a beautiful one from my side. Unumpo Mele Losacha. Have a beautiful one. Absolutely. From me, Pat Matlaongi, to Ina Khailale. This podcast is brought to you by Lerato Agency and Lenala Beauty.